What is the number one fear in retirement? Do you know? It's the fear of living too long. That seems like a good thing, right? We live a long time, but the flip side of that from a financial planning perspective is it's the fear of outliving your money. In this video, I will share with you some of the things you need to be aware of and plan for so that you do not outlive your money in retirement. Hi, I'm Mark Singer. For up-to-date and timely information on how to maximize your retirement income, click on the link below and hit the notifications bell so you're alerted to when we post new videos. Let me start by sharing with you an interesting study that came out. The question was, if you have $500,000 as your nest egg, do you think that will be enough for you to retire? That question was asked of those who had $500,000. The answer to the question was no. The follow-up question was, then how much do you think you need in order to retire properly? And the answer from those people was a million dollars. The second group of people had a million dollars in their portfolio. They were asked, do you think a million dollars is enough to retire on? Their answer was no. The follow-up question was, how much do you think you'll need in order to retire properly? And the answer came back, 2.4 million. Then they went to a group that had $2 million. You know where I'm going with this. They were asked, do you think if you have $2 million, could you retire properly? And the answer was, shockingly, no. Follow-up question, how much do you think they need? The common answer was $5 million. So herein lies some of the fear that we have inside when we go to retire, that we, no matter how much money we have, it's not enough and we need more. And the real answer is to step back and do some planning. So let me share with you some of those steps. I'm gonna give you four steps. And the first one I'm gonna call, take the mystery out of the decision-making process. What? What did he just say? Is this financial planning? Absolutely. Think about this for a moment. If you're about to go on vacation, well, actually, right now, it doesn't seem we can. But in when we finally get back to a normal world, whatever that means, and we do take that trip, and we do go on that plane, and we do go somewhere for two or three weeks to enjoy it with our spouse or our family, and we're going to spend twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on that adventure. Are you sure that by spending the money today, it's okay that it won't impact you tomorrow? See, there's a mystery here. If I spend it today, will it be there tomorrow? Will I be able to make a better decision if I know more? I call it taking the mystery out of the decision-making process. I'll give you another story. I had a client of mine who called me to ask if she could do the kitchen cabinets. If you know me, you know I can't do kitchen cabinets. But what she was asking was, if I spend the $5,000 on the kitchen cabinets, is it going to be okay for me to do so? Will it impact my ability to generate my income later? And if so, if you give me the green light, where do I get the money from? So I spend the least amount in taxes. There's numbers of different moving parts when it comes to financial planning. It's not just about you know the day to day. You may have a a country club membership. You may want to buy another home. You may want to get that a third car. You may, there are a lot of things you may want to do or pursue, go visit the grandkids. But the question is in the back of your mind, is it okay to spend that money? What impact will it have later on? And by doing the planning, by the way, it will help you to take the mystery out of the decision-making process. The next step really important, okay? If I'm going to retire and I'm looking at what's happening, I really need to take care of not only me, but my spouse as well. I need to make sure that there's income now, and when I'm not here or I am infirm, that she, or the flip side, he is taken care of. So make sure that when you do 
the stress tests on all of your planning that you account for and you put in realistic assumptions. Don't put into your investment plan, you know, an 8% annualized rate of return. That's, that's not something that I believe is real and that you can build on a good foundation looking forward. Choose a conservative number. Choose four or five, maybe 6%. And when it comes to inflation as, as an assumption in there, put in two or three, used to be 4%, but maybe probably two or 3% now. And all of that will help to give you a handle on whether or not you have enough cash flow now and you can retire now, and that when you're gone, your spouse is taken care of. Now I'm gonna get into the other two steps here, but I, and I know that there's a lot of confusing information, contradictory information. We live in volatile markets right now, but if you're concerned about avoiding some of the common mistakes people make, hit the button below to take a look at our masterclass. The next step I really wanna take a look at is your investment portfolio, not specific line items. So he, he, here's something for you. So. I have people who come to me and go, is this a good stock or is this a good mutual fund? Well, I don't know. It all depends on what your goals are and whether or not that stock or fund fits into the overall proper allocations you need to generate the income you're going to need from your portfolio, both now and later. So to ask the question about whether or not this is a good stock or a good stock tip or this is a good mutual fund or, or exchange trade fund, whatever, whatever the investment vehicle is that you like that is your choice, make sure that you're not taking on more risk than you need to. But on the flip side, believe it or not, you can take on too little risk because that might mean that your portfolio will be depleted when you start taking income and you'll outlive your money. That's not a good thing. Finally, fifth step, make sure you plan. It's all about planning. I say this over and over again. It's what I do. It's what you did when you were in business. As you go to retire, you have to have a foundation, something to look at, something that reflects how you believe you're going to lead the rest of your life both financially and emotionally, spiritually, etc. It takes some work, but when you do the planning, you'll find one of two things. Either you're on the right track and don't have to make any adjustments now, or that you're not on the right track to pursue your goals and you'll understand what adjustments you need now in order to be on and going in the right direction. Again, there's a lot of moving pieces. If you are interested in our masterclass on how to avoid the four common mistakes, hit the button below. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and tell a friend. Thank you very much for watching, and I truly hope you enjoy the retirement journey.